When Jeff Bezos completed his first trip to space in the summer of 2021, there was a petition that he should remain in orbit. The petition has so far received over 200,000 signatures, clearly reflecting the public's frustration with Jeff's space company Blue Origin. Indeed, over the past 20 years, the thing we remember most with the name Blue Origin is Sue Origin and copy, rather than innovation and contribution. Ironically, despite Blue Origin's efforts to catch up by replicating SpaceX's projects, the company's achievements seem to be nothing and even backfiring. Find out everything in today's episode. Starting from just a small room in the family's garage with an initial capital of $300,000. For 29 years, Jeff Bezos has turned Amazon into the world's leading multinational technology company. Amazon is so popular these days that if you type in relentless.com, it will go to the Amazon website. Jeff Bezos' startup story has thus become an inspirational story for any unicorn in the global. Pitifully, his space company Blue Origin does not appear to be moving at the same pace and especially is left behind by its arch space rival, Elon Musk's SpaceX. It's safe to say Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos have a lot in common. They have a strong passion for space travel and space commercialization. They are billionaires who made a lot of money from very successful businesses and then used that huge amount of money to confidently enter the space industry. Bezos could afford to found Blue Origin in 2000 when he made a lot of money from Amazon. Two years later, SpaceX was born based on the money Elon Musk made when his company was sold to PayPal, which was then bought by eBay. Now, more than 20 years later, Let's take a look back and see how far they've come. SpaceX is currently dominating space with many record-breaking achievements, while Blue Origin is always a follower. The key point here is the Elon Musk team's spirit of not being afraid of risk and failure. In 2006, after making millions when PayPal sold to eBay and investing a third of Elon's fortune into the space venture, Elon's space firm quickly attempted to launch its first rocket but ended up with failure as a result of a fuel leak and resultant fire. The next two launches executed the first stage of flight, but encountered issues after separation that prevented the spacecraft from reaching orbit. Three consecutive failures almost pushed the company into bankruptcy. More terribly, under the effect of Murphy's Law, Musk was also facing issues with financing at Tesla and reportedly waking from nightmares screaming and in physical pain due to the stress. However, what does not kill you will make you stronger. Finally, God gave him a last chance as SpaceX's fourth flight as funding was beginning to run dry. On September 28, 2008, the Falcon 1's first successful launch was from Amalek Island in the Marshall Islands. It was also the first successful orbital launch from a privately funded company representing a major shift in an industry that had been dominated by government programs. By contrast, BO gets obsessed with getting things exactly right, which explains why, rather than innovation, they intentionally go much slower to copy SpaceX's rockets. As you can see, there are some similarities between the rockets of the two companies. New Glenn is Blue Origin's heavy-lift booster rocket, which the company plans to use for placing crewed and uncrewed payloads into Earth orbit and beyond. Like SpaceX's Falcon 9, New Glenn is a two-stage booster with a reusable first stage that mission planners hope will land vertically after stage separation. Nevertheless, in terms of size, New Glenn 98 meters in height is taller than Falcon 9, and with a 7-meter diameter, its payload fairing is bigger than that of SpaceX's rocket. The vehicle consists of a reusable first stage powered by seven B-4 engines, which use liquid oxygen and methane for propellant like SpaceX's Raptor rocket engines, and an expendable second stage with two BE-3U engines, powered by liquid oxygen and hydrogen. Like Falcon 9, New Glenn's first stage contains engines that can be relit during descent to allow a soft landing and the rocket has six extendable landing legs that deploy just before touchdown. Falcon 9's first stage has four legs. Blue Origin also plans for New Glenn to land on a mobile, sea-based platform. 
SpaceX currently lands their rockets on drone ships. The current New Glenn landing platform ship, Jacqueline, named for Bezos' mother, measures an impressive 115 meters by 45 meters in size, larger than the platforms used by SpaceX. This ship replaces an earlier version of the Blue Origin mobile sea-based landing platform, also named Jacqueline. New Glenn's first stage, unlike Falcon 9, is outfitted with four movable aerodynamic control surfaces referred to as fins, which allow for attitude adjustment during the descent and landing of the first stage. Below these fins, the first stage is also adorned with two strakes. Strakes are long, wing-like projections that control airflow and provide stabilization. The strakes on New Glenn will provide some lift during flight of the first stage, and strakes in general are used to increase the stability of both rockets and aircraft in flight. The fins and strakes give New Glenn a very different profile than the streamlined Falcon 9. New Glenn can surpass Falcon 9 regarding payload capacity. If all goes as planned, New Glenn will be able to place a 45, 360 kilogram payload into Earth orbit and a 6, 800 kilogram payload on a trajectory to the moon. Meanwhile, Falcon 9 full thrust can carry 22,800 kilograms to low Earth orbit. However, SpaceX has two other weapons, Falcon Heavy and Starship. SpaceX's Falcon Heavy can carry 63,800 kilograms to LEO. When fully expended, 57,000 kilograms with boosters recovered and less than 50,000 kilograms with boosters and core recovered. Starship is even more incredible. As the largest and most powerful rocket in the world, Starship is promised to launch more than 200 tons to LEO in the third version, four times larger than New Glenn. Starship version 3's power is up to 10,000 tons of force, which is much more powerful than New Glenn's 1743 force. When talking about innovation, clearly, Blue is kind of lazy compared to SpaceX. This is what a Blue Origin executive said in a 2018 memo. In a world of rocketry where everything has changed and the state-of-the-art technologies are invented every day, obviously, idleness seems to be something unacceptable. A section of the Blue Origin memo notes the very long hours expected at SpaceX, saying that burnout was part of their labor strategy and people are expected to work on vacations or not take them. Another Blue Origin executive even suggested in the memo that the company's standard 40-hour work week wouldn't be enough to meet its ambitions. Another executive said in the memo, we need to talk about the time and effort personnel are spending to achieve our mission. Adding, if we expect greater than 40 hours, let's clearly communicate that and evaluate personnel based on that guidance. Agreeing with this statement, SpaceX's Musk mentioned that nobody ever changed the world on 40 hours a week and suggested that people would need to clock around 80 to more than that 100 hours a week if they did. To add to the certainty, former SpaceX employee Josh Boehm wrote in a post on Quora in 2017 that his workday was often more than 12 hours long. So I often did work more than 12-hour days and pulled many all-nighters at the office. But again, this wasn't because I was forced to, but because I loved my work and saw the value I was bringing to the team. I technically reported to the CIO, but was essentially self-managed, like many others there at the time. A phrase we threw around a lot was, you are your own slave driver. Thanks to the crazy working speed, now SpaceX has had a breathtaking shift from a young unicorn to a titan in the new space. As of November 6th, SpaceX has set a record with its 400th Falcon launch, surpassing all achievements of any rocket launch organization to date. This year, SpaceX initially set a target of 144 rocket launches, but due to serious conflicts with the U.S. federal agency, the FAA, that goal seems far away. While the company will not make its original goal, it is still targeting 30 more launches in 2024 roughly one every two days. More importantly, according to Kiko Donchev, Vice President of Launch of Space X, the only way we will achieve this goal is if we focus on safety and reliability. Above all else, we must keep the team safe and deliver 100% mission success. 
Despite being born two years before SpaceX, Blue has been quietly conducting research without urgency or publicity. The new Glenn rocket has experienced many delays since its development began before 2013. Initially announced in 2016, the rocket was designed as a heavy lift launch vehicle with a two-stage configuration, capable of carrying substantial payloads into orbit. However, the timeline for its first launch has been repeatedly pushed back. In 2016, the rocket's design was publicly announced, with plans for a reusable first stage powered by seven B-4 engines. Blue Origin indicated that the new rocket would be many times larger than New Shepard, even though it would be the smallest of the family of Blue Origin orbital vehicles. Blue Origin indicated that the first orbital launch was expected no earlier than 2020 from the Florida launch facility, but by early 2020 had delayed it to late 2021. In August 2020, the Air Force announced that New Glenn was not selected for the National Security Space Launch Phase II launch procurement. Due to this, in February 2021, Blue Origin announced that the first flight would slip to no earlier than late 2022, saying it re-baselined the development of the launch vehicle after losing a key Pentagon contract last year. In March 2022, the expected first launch of New Glenn slipped to no earlier than the fourth quarter of 2023. In January 2024, the first stage of New Glenn was being transported at Kennedy Space Center from the factory to the launch complex in preparation for a 2024 launch. As of now, the first launch is scheduled for November 2024, carrying a prototype Blue Ring spacecraft. This represents yet another delay from previous projections. These launch delays have had several repercussions. Of key importance, NASA was slated to launch two identical so-called small sats to Mars aboard New Glenn's inaugural flight in October 2024 but NASA later pulled them from the flight. The Escape and Plasma Acceleration and Dynamics Explorers, Escapade. Small sats were due to be finalized for flight and fueled with nitrogen tetroxide and hydrazine propellants for a mission that would study the Martian atmosphere. But this critical step was canceled. NASA feared that if New Glenn was not ready for the planned launch window, the fuel would have to be drained from the two spacecraft, which is undesirable given the cost and the potential risk of damaging the spacecraft in the process. NASA is now eyeing a potential new launch window for the two spacecraft in mid-2025, or even 2026, possibly aboard a future New Glenn flight. Given the loss of the Escapade mission, Blue Origin is now planning for the inaugural flight of New Glenn to carry hardware related to its Blue Ring project. Blue Ring is described as a platform for launching hardware into specific orbits, satellite orbital adjustment and refueling, and even cloud-based computing in orbit. This takes some pressure off of Blue Origin, as the payload will be of the company's own design and development, and therefore does not tie it to any outside third-party customer with their own deadlines to meet. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.